So today we're going to talk about tangents uh, to a circle. So uh, we're going to then learn our first theorem of, that involves tangent. Uh, who can read this for us? How about uh, Eric? Can you read this for us? Okay, so there you go. Here's a picture. So if you have a line that is tangent to a circle, then this line M is perpendicular to the radius. You see the radius OT, yeah. radius uh, drawn to the point of tangency. See, not any radius, but O to T. That radius is going to be perpendicular to this line M. Okay. So that's our first theorem in this Wait. section. Is it tangent? Yes, that's how we define it. Remember tangent? Okay, but sometimes a line segment or a ray could be referred to be a, t as a tangent, but it could, it's got to be a part of this tangent line, right? All right, so we're going to prove this together. Uh, so write this down. Oh wait, and think about how you go about proving this. Okay. So to prove this, uh, the best way I think is to use proof by contradiction, or what's another name for that? Paragraph. Indirect proof. Indirect no. Paragraph proof is different. Indirect proof. So. Do, who remembers what to do first? If we want to use proof by contradiction or this indirect proof, Amy, what should I do first? Um, assume temporarily that the conclusion is false. That's correct. Assume temporarily that the conclusion. What is the conclusion in this? O that OT is perpendicular to M. M. So we're going to say, assume temporarily that OT is what? Not perpendicular, Not perpendicular to M. And as soon as we do this, even though it looks like OT is perpendicular, we know that's what we're trying to prove. It is, okay? Yeah. Thank you. It is perpendicular, but as soon as you assume temporary that it is not, then uh, we could say something else about uh, this line M. Uh, if, what do you know about a point outside a the line? There is exactly one line that is parallel, parallel or, parallel. or per perpendicular. We want to use the one that's perpendicular. So if OT is not, right? A line or line segment that is perpendicular to this line, then guess what? There must be some other point on this line M, right? So that when you draw from O to the other point, it's got to be what? Per perpendicular. Perpendicular, correct? And guess what we're going to call that line? Or line segment? OZ. Okay, so here's what they're saying. So they're saying, assume temporarily that OT is not perpendicular to M, then guess what? Then the perpendicular segment from O to M intersects in some other point Z and show that O Z. Okay. So what we're saying is because I mean we know O T is perpendicular but that's what we're trying to prove right so we're gonna assume temporarily that O T is not perpendicular then there must be another one right because O T is not the one that's perpendicular correct because we know that point outside the line there is a line that is there's exactly one line that is perpendicular from that point to the line does that make sense? So let's just call that line or line segment OZ. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. So even though the picture doesn't look like OZ is perpendicular, that's what we have. Because we assume temporarily that OT is not perpendicular. Are you okay so far? Yes, so then, if that's true, what do you know about the perpendicular segment from a point outside a line? We learned something about the perpendicular segment that is from the point outside our line. What do you know about that perpendicular segment? One person knows? I want you to discuss this with a group. You guys remember this? Sure. What do you know about the perpendicular segment from point outside our line? Oh, Go ahead, everybody think about it. So, what do you know about then the perpendicular segment from point outside our line, this point O? How about uh, Jonathan? The perpendicular segment from point outside of this line M is what? Shortest. shortest. So what are we saying that the shortest line segment is right now? Because we assume temporarily that OT is not the perpendicular segment, but OZ is, what are we saying? The OZ is the what? Shortest. shortest line, shortest distance, or shortest line segment from what? O to M. M. That's exactly right. So they even tell you which page you can find this in. Uh, the perpendicular segment from O to M, then, is the shortest uh, segment from O to M. So guess what? OZ must be less than OT. That's because we assume temporarily that OT is not perpendicular to M. Is that okay? Yeah. So now from here, we need to find a contradiction. Is that right? That's how yeah. we. So we need to uh, 
come up with a contradiction to the statement OZ less than OT. So let's see what we could do. Uh, let me ask you this. Some of you have, some, you have already an idea. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so let, me, let me ask you this question. So we assume temporarily that this conclusion is false, but given information is still true. So therefore, M is still the tangent to this circle O, and this M, the point of tangency for this M is at T, correct? Uh -huh. So let me ask you this. Is Z, right, which is another point on line M, is Z inside a circle, outside a circle, or on the circle? Outside. Yeah, why must Z be outside? Because that's a key point. Why must Z be outside? How about, hold on, how about, Kristen, why must Z be outside of the circle? That's why. Tangent only hits the circle exactly at one point, which is at T. So all the other points on this line M must be outside of the circle, correct? Does that make sense? So if Z is outside the circle, what can you now tell me the then distance between OT to OZ? OZ must be greater than OT because look, OZ isn't that greater than the radius? Right? Because it's outside a circle, correct? It's, it's going to be, if it's outside a circle, it's going to be longer than the radius. That's obvious. So therefore, this is what they're saying. Look, because tangent M intersects O only at one point, Z, I mean T, right? Z lies outside a circle O, right? Therefore what? OZ is then greater than OT. Well, there's your... What is that? There's your contradiction. Yes? We said just now that if we assume temporarily that OT is not perpendicular to M, then OZ is less than OT. But now, since Z is outside of the circle, OZ has got to be greater than OT. Right? Therefore, our temporary assumption is what? False. False. Therefore, what? The given it, I mean the proof in it. Yeah. So the statement OZ less than OT and OZ greater than OT are contradictory. Therefore, the temporary assumption is false. It follows that OT must be perpendicular to M. Does that make sense? Okay. So, any question here? Does this make sense? Do you guys remember proof by contradiction? It's a good review, isn't it? Okay, so, good. So now we know then that M is got to be M, right? Is perpendicular, if M is the uh, tangent line at T, uh, OT must be perpendicular to line M. Is that okay? Are we good? Okay. So from this theorem uh, comes a corollary. Let's see whether we can figure this out. Okay. Let's take a look at this now. So somebody read this corollary for us. How about uh, John? Can you read this for us? Yeah. So are we talking about tangent line right now? Tangent line? No, because tangent lines don't have any length. So here, when we say tangent to a circle, we mean tangent segment. Which segments are we talking about here? Uh, take a look at this picture. Iveta, which two segments are we talking about? P, A, and P, B. Do you see how point outside a circle in each? You can pick any point outside a circle, right? In, in each of these points, how many tangent lines can you, tangent segments can you draw? So, infinite many? No. Just pick a point. From each of the point outside a circle, how many tangent segments can you draw? One, really? Two. Infinitely could, many. Infinitely many, or really? Or two. two. You're, you can only draw two. Just like this. If you have a point outside of the circle, Oh. Point P, right? There is one above, one below. Can you draw another one no. that is tangent to the circle? How about in the middle? Yeah, the middle. Would that be a tangent if I were to no, go no, through like this? Yes. Remember? Yeah, you have to extend these. Remember, oh, tangents. Gosh. It's a line, right? Tangent segments are part of this tangent, right? Line. So there could be only two, not infinitely many or one. Okay, there are two, correct? So what we're saying is, if you pick a point outside a circle and draw these tangent segments, guess what? These two segments will be congruent. And why should this be true? And of course, this has to do something with that previous theorem, right? Because it comes from, right? This color is for that theorem. But I want you to all think about it as a group, how, why this is true. Go ahead, everybody think about it, discuss. All right, who can tell me then why? Here, I've, I've made it bigger. Who can tell me why PA is uh, congruent to PB? How about, let me pick somebody at random. What did you guys come up with? Esther over here. Uh, yeah, what did you guys come up with? <laughs> 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 yeah.
Yeah, good. We need uh, the point, the center of this the circle right here. You good? So let's call it O. Yeah. Then what? Good. Radius A O N. It would be right angle right here. Good. What else? Sure. O B will be also right angle. Yeah, these are right. Hold on. These are right because of the previous theorem, right? Good, Esther. What do we do next? <laughs> previous theorem. Hold on. Hold on. The theorem we just said, right? The line, if you have a tangent line, right? The point of tangency to the radius that's perpendicular to this tangent. That's what he said, right? Yeah. That's what we just proved. Huh? Hold on. We'll get there. So after this, what do we do? Yeah. Yeah, draw OP here. Okay. All right, good. I'm going to I'm going to ask someone else. I think you have the answer. Okay. Then what? So what? Why does then Samantha, why then can we say after this that PA is coming into PB? So what? Um Mhm. Yes. So we know these are these radii are congruent. We know that PO is congruent to itself. What do you have? These two triangles are? Yeah, these two triangles are what, class? Congruent by what? Angle side angle. Okay, listen. This will not be because of angle side angle. Or this will not be because of side side angle. Do we even have side side angle? Does that work every time? No. Okay. So, 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 there, so it doesn't work. But but listen, class. But what if, what kind of two what kind of triangles are these two triangles? Right yeah. And for right these right triangles, we have the hypotenuse congruent and then the legs congruent, right? Hypotenuse leg. HL by HL, the two triangles are congruent. So therefore, we could say then PA is congruent to what? P because why? Corresponding corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, good. Uh, then let's go to the next theorem. Who would like to read this for us? How about Brandon? Yeah, what does that mean? What does, doesn't it sound familiar? Okay, who recognize, what is this? Uh, Justin, what is this? This is nothing more than what? Okay. Let him answer. What do you think, Justin? So let me give you a hint. Look at the previous theorem we just proved. Do they look familiar? If a line in the plane of a circle is perpendicular to the radius at its outer point, then the line is tangent to the circle. Guess what? This is converse of the theorem that we just proved. Very good. So there you go. Here's a picture. So if you happen to have a line that happens to be perpendicular uh, to a radius at its outer point, guess what? That line is, it has to be tangent to this circle. And uh, we won't prove it but right now, but guess what? To prove this, do you think proof by constitution might be helpful? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right, so write this down. Now, uh, when each of a polygon, each side of a polygon is tangent to a circle, the polygon is said to be, anybody want to guess? Um, when each side of a polygon, this is sort of the opposite of what we had before. You guys remember we had a circle, we had a polygon inside a circle? Now, we have the other way around. When each side of a polygon is tangent to a circle, then the polygon is said to be, how about, uh, Josh? What do you think? What do you think uh, this will be called? When each side of a polygon is tangent to a circle, then the polygon is said to be, now the polygon is outside the circle, so it's, Polygon is, let me give you, is circumscribed about the what? Yeah, about the circle is what it means. Okay. Uh, no, is this the same as what we did yesterday? No, it's the opposite. It's this picture, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you like. So, 
Oh, that was the Yeah, this is totally opposite of what we had before. Wait, what? So when each side of a polygon is tangent to the circle, you see how each of these sides are tangent to the circle? Right? In other words, you have a circle inside a polygon, right? Then we say the polygon is circumscribed about the circle. Okay. Uh, what about in terms of circle? And we could also say circle is what? It's inscribed in what? The in the polygon. Very good. Okay. So both of these are describing what you have there. So please be careful. If you're not careful, right, and if they ask you to draw something like this, right, if you understand as the other way, then you would not get it right. Does that make sense? So there's actually, again, like last time, shorter way of saying the polygon is circumscribed about the circle. Uh, we say then, anybody want to guess? It's a shorter way of saying the polygon is circumscribed about the circle. Yes, yeah, Chan? Circumscribed circle. Are you sure? Because no, circumscribed. Circumscribed. circumscribed polygon. polygon is how you say that. So, another way of saying polygon is said to be circumscribed about the circle is the same as circumscribed polygon. What about the other way around? Uh, how do we say this in short? Circle is inscribed in a in the polygon. Yeah, Justin, or Jonathan. Uh, inscribed circle. That's right, inscribed circle. Does oh. that make sense? You guys remember this? So this is totally opposite of what we did yesterday. So again, it doesn't have to be just a triangle. It could be any polygon you want, as long as each side, not only couple, of, each side has to be uh, tangent to the circle. As you can see, each side of this is the circle. So please note the, note the difference, okay, from what we did last time to this. This is totally opposite. Last time we had the circle outside the polygon. Now, if it's a circle inside, right, that's how we say it. This is how we say it, okay? Some vocabs that you should be aware of uh, is a common uh, tangent. Uh, what that is is a, is a line that is tangent to each of two coplanar circles. So you could have two circles, right? And you could, have, you could imagine a line being tangent to both of these. Oh, there are two types, by the way. First type is this. It's called the common internal tangent. Okay. What that is is it looks something like this. Okay. Uh, why why is this one called common internal tangent? It's because the ta tangent it says what intersects the segment joining the centers. Does that make sense? So if the tangent uh, intersects the segment joining the center, it's called the common. common Common, what kind of tangent? Yes, Internal. Sorry, no. But does it have, could it not touch, could, I, could it not uh, intersect yes. the segment? It's Guess what that one's called? Yes. Yeah. Right common here is the external. picture. Yeah. Common Where's external. Okay. Oh, okay does this make sense? Yes. All right. Now, could you draw another one other than this AB? Yes. Yeah, you could yeah, draw one like way, this. What about, could you draw another external? Other yeah, like that one on the bottom, right? Uh, so that's fine, right? These are not the only ones, right? All right. Uh, Another vocab that you should be aware of. Let me, any question on this? Pretty straightforward. Okay, let me show you the other one. Okay. Another a vocabulary that you should be aware of. A circle can be tangent to a line, but it uh, can also be tangent to another circle. So, oops. These are called tangent circles. So here's a picture. And we, again, have two types. This is the ex ex uh, circle A and B are externally tangent because both of these circles are tangent to the same line, right? Guess what the uh, two circles that are internally tangent might look like then? Oh. Yes? Yeah, exactly. They're inside oh, the circle this way. Dang. So if you have a line, see, look, both of these circles are what? Have the same tangent line, don't they? Yes. But, one of, but, but one, the smaller one is inside the bigger one, right? Yes. But they do share the same uh, tangent line of tangency. Yes. So that when you have that, then we say that the two circles are internally tangent. So you have to know what they mean by, right, when they say two circles are externally tangent or two circles are internally tangent. Otherwise, right, you may get the wrong idea. Any question? Does that make sense? It's pretty straightforward. Okay, good.